Probably got to wait for Corporation oh. Council. There we go. <laughs> I got 529. Oh. You're a minute fast, Ralph. I mean, let's be honest. Seconds. Based on the computer. I'm going based on the computer. You've been like that your whole life. I'd like to call the uh, bud this budget hearing uh, in order. Uh, please rise and uh, uh, join me in the uh, uh, Pledge, Pledge of Allegiance. Of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I almost said the Star Spangled Banner, but people don't want to hear me sing that. I can guarantee you. I'd sing that for you. Sing it then. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let, tonight we have uh, HR the library, and then public works. Um, let's start off with HR. Are you guys ready or do you want, I can have the library go, it doesn't matter. Let's go with HR first. All right. Easy, John. I'm trying. <laughs> All right. Just so you can actually hear me. There you go, woman to the rescue. Always. All right. Well, good evening. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to present the HR budget to everyone. And with me, I have Kim Holmeyer, uh, project uh, manager with HR. And so um, to kick off our where we're at, oh, here's the, excellent. The. Our budget, our HR structure, uh, within HR we have administration, civil service, and then employee relations, which is our benefits. Our current workforce uh, numbers for 2022, we have uh, 11 approved positions. For this particular budget, we're asking to go to 12. You notice in uh, 2019, HR reduced one position, that was a trainer's position. Um, due to budget cuts, that position was eliminated. And you'll see 2021 says 11, that should actually be 10. We did not increase it back to 11 until this past year of 2022 with my position. So we are asking now to uh, bring that trainer's position back. Um, we have nine positions right now filled. Uh, we have openings for the director and the HR manager. Uh, hoping to have the HR manager fill this, this next month. On uh, the new budget, uh, you'll notice we're asking for more for in personnel services as well as contractual services as the, the big areas of increase. For the personnel services changes, uh, that's been increased to include the position of the trainer as well as um, for the the position of the HR director. In contractual changes, uh, we've increased uh, the amounts for the civil service testing, um, and Kim is here, she can speak to that um, here in a little bit, as well as bringing in some uh, extra contractual help when we start moving into the ERP program, um, the updates, data migration over from the current system to the new system. I'd like to highlight a few accomplishments that HR made this past year. I came to HR in June, and um, personally, I've been blown away with the staff we have in HR. We have a really strong, dedicated staff, um, all very professional, um, know what they're doing. So I've been blessed to have this group to work with. Some of the things that they've been able to accomplish in 2022, uh, COVID. Everything's COVID, COVID, COVID. They were able to uh, keep up with the policies and the changes and change with the procedures. Um, unemployment fraud, they were able to address some unemployment fraud that were going, that was going on within the state. Uh, we opened, had online open enrollment for the first time for employee benefits. We uh, completed the fire promotional, two police entry exams. Uh, Kim has started a third ex uh, police exam. 
Uh, we've done police lateral exams, a fire entry exam, and electrical apprentices exams. Uh, we've welcomed 122 new hires, new hires, rehires to the city, as well as having 31% of that minority hires. Uh, we've had 75 retirements and 71 separations. So you get the idea that HR has been really busy this year. Um, we've had RFPs that we uh, put out for our employee um, health um, with the employee clinic and the health TPA. Um, those were successfully uh, completed for the health care consultants, um, accelerated benefits, the renewal of the health link for the health network. Um, we just finished open enrollment, uh, passive open enrollment uh, for this upcoming year. And uh, they've also dealt with significant health plan changes with the elimination of the basic select. Some goals that we have in place for 2023 budget. Um, we want to complete an overhaul of the new employee orientation. What I'm looking at with the trainer's position is currently um, part of Kim's duties as well as doing the police, the fire, uh, electrical, she has also taken on doing um, the new employee orientation. I want our trainer to take on those roles and not only take on that role, but to do a complete overhaul. That's improve what we're doing with new uh, employee orientation. Uh, want to take a look at the city's compensation plan. Uh, I've been noticing we're having some um, salary compressions. So I want to take a look at that at the various positions, the various jobs, and see where we're at in relation to our comparable cities. Um, want to increase city employee training. Right now, HR is getting uh, requests for um, all kinds of uh, specialized areas, such as conflict management, uh, communication skills, interviewing skills, team building. We don't have a person that can step out and do that. Um, the national average is about 1.4 FTE per 100 employees for HR. Uh, we are currently at nine, fully staffed is 11. If we add the trainer, that's 12. National average, we would be at 18. So you can see these folks are taking on a lot of duties. Um, as well, I will, uh, one thing I'm gonna ask the trainer to do is to um, take a look at overhauling and improving uh, the new employees, as well as establishing an internship and a workforce outreach program. Something um, that we really need to help increase the number of applicants we have uh, coming into the city's jobs. Um, and then to uh, complete police promotional, police entry, and police lateral exams. Kim, would you like to speak a little bit about that? Come on up. Hello. So the reason, again, we're asking for additional money for our police testing, or not police testing line, but our testing line is our, uh, I went out for an RFP for police and fire promotional testing as well as lateral testing. When I did that about, oh, it was about three years ago, four years ago, we only had three vendors reply. One of them ended up withdrawing. There was a huge difference between the two vendors approximately $171,000. Um, the vendor that we had been currently using, we had a few uh, few issues with them, and uh, so we definitely need to go out and see what else is out there. I anticipate they were a great cost savings for us, and we also do a lot of work on our end, too, to try to save money um, by, if we can, administering the written exam versus having them come and do it. Um, so, again, it's going to... I'm hoping we sent out to about 10 vendors this time throughout the country, so I'm hoping for some better responses, but I do anticipate, though, it's going to cost us more money. Any questions for me on testing or anything? Okay. Buddy? Yeah. Everybody's good. All right. Good thank job. you. Thank you. So that opens up to any other questions that you might have for me. All right. Alderman Donlin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Director, uh, when I first looked at the budget, uh, when we got the book on Friday, 
Um, the first thing that popped out was the increase in the 1,100 lines, the personal services of nearly $300,000. I think you partially answered the question. But in relation to the new position of trainer, has the city ever had a trainer before? Yes, we have. And that position was eliminated um, back in the 2019 budget. And was it... Uh, was it located within HR? Yes, it was. Okay, and what will the salary of that position be as proposed by this budget? Uh, we are looking um, for around uh, the 60, 62,000. Uh, it will be uh, a PM10 position. Okay, and regarding the, uh, the accomplishments page, in particular, I was curious to uh, have some questions and, and some of these might we might have to wait until Monday during the police and fire but um, So we presently have an active new hire police list and an active new hire fire list, correct? How many police officers were hired in this present fiscal year? That's why I brought Kim <laughs> mm -hmm. So this current fiscal year, I don't I'll have to get you the exact number, but um, I want to say it's about 25 Okay and uh, um, with our eligibility list, they've been smaller. Um, right. I think all police agencies are hurting, and so we're in competition with everybody as well. So we get this list developed, and then we offer them employment, and they've already been taken by somebody else. So um, our current list is getting ready to be exhausted. We have another one ready. We anticipate that one to be exhausted probably within a month. And then we have another test that um, we're kicking off with uh, in February. So we want to do another hire of 10 individuals for an April Academy. Okay, thank you for that. And for the fire, um, there's obviously a, a eligible list presently. When does that expire, that list? Um, it, I do have that with me. It expires on July 6th of 22. Uh, okay. We haven't done any hiring off that list yet. We are doing uh, some backgrounds on that right now. Um, but we do anticipate that we'll probably be requesting a year extension on the list. Oh, that's right. We can do that. And that's yes. done through civil service, right? Um, civil service and state law. Okay. State law, we can only do, um, it can only be a two-year list. So how many firefighters, new firefighters, that is, have been hired in this fiscal year? None. None. Okay. And I know this is probably a discussion for Monday, but we all know that the fire overtime budget has gone way up. And if you're not, I mean, this isn't rocket science, if you're not hiring people, you're going to have that line go up, correct? That's my assumption, yes. Okay. Well, all right. And then uh, your budget as a whole, I noticed, went up 28.16%, and it looks like a majority of that's that 1,100 line. Explain to me, Director, just because I don't know, you mentioned the, the uh, new position, but what is this? what does it mean when it says transition to HR director, and where is that? what's causing that increase there? So within this budget, um, my salary for this past year was only a partial salary. So with this particular budget, we're budgeting um, a complete salary year for myself and then for an HR director. We'll, probably won't be spending that money because um, as long as I'm in the, the role that I'm in, we won't be replacing the director or the assistant director. So that is that will probably be some extra money uh, sitting there, um, but it can, I took out a, um, and it's probably not reflecting this. I had originally asked for two positions: a trainer and uh, an additional HR specialist. And um, I removed the HR specialist because um, I felt the trainer was the most important piece to do right now. If I had a specialist. Um, that would enable us to take some of the load off some of the folks we have and actually start to do um, what I consider to be very important to start doing some succession planning. Uh, I've got two highly specialized individuals that could be retiring in the next um, few years. And so um, that position would allow me to start doing some cross training and um, start filling, back filling some of those positions to make sure that uh, when we have the retirements come, we've got somebody that can step in and fill those positions. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, Director, I appreciate the I appreciate your answering the questions, and I'll probably have some follow-up that we'll do offline, but uh, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the entire department for the work that's been done the last couple of years in particular. 
during some really, really unique times. Thank you. Alderwoman Conley. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, so when we went through the conversations with CWLP around closing um, Unit 33 earlier and then, the, and then the other two units, one of the things that was said in those meetings was that the city would be providing assistance to all impacted employees. So is that your office that's helping those people identify positions in the city and, and, and apply for them, or how is that working? We post those positions uh, when they're available. CWLP does a really good job of uh, making sure that those employees know what's available, what's coming open, uh, and when they're available. So is there any sort of um, assistance being provided, like a, a structural assistance being provided to the people? I mean, because we know not everyone is probably going to get a job with the city. Are we doing any sort of outreach and support to those employees as they look for other positions or? Not through HR at this current time. Okay, thank you. I, I, I will say I think that would be important considering you know, the nature of what's happening. But I, I understand also when you've, you're down employees yourself that I understand what it is to add another job to someone's description in, in your office. But I, I would at least encourage if there's some way to provide some kind of support to these people who are having their lives upturned. Um, Thank you. Um, real quick, Ron, how, do, you, do we know what's the current number of employees in the city that are retirement eligible as of right now? Um, I would have to get that number for okay. you. Um, let me get that number for yeah. you. I, I, I'd hate to speak off cuff because um, I would be wrong. So let me All get right. that number for you. Well, uh, because, and the only reason why I, I, I say, I think that, and I hope that every director does it, they should have that number and, and keep it updated because, um, you know, you, you, you figure that if they're eligible to retire, they're, they're thinking about it at least. And uh, we have to, we have to, you know, kind of plan ahead if we can. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in that. So, if, if I could, and yep. Mayor, yeah, just to uh, clarify on the CWLP, um, uh, that's uh, under the purview of CWLP. They're working with the individuals, finding them placement. Uh, last time we checked, uh, they felt they could place everybody, but if in case they don't, of course, they'd work with HR within. Their own department to uh, provide that assistance in that direction. Good, thank you, thank you, Mayor. But uh, that'd be a fair question to ask them next Thursday, I think. Well, I've, I've got questions for CWP. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Any, Alderman Redpath. Ron, could you tell me is there employee uh, non-union employee raises in this budget? Uh, there, yes, there are. Um, let's see if my list here. Um, we have budgeted um, yes we, we have budgeted uh, um, three percent merit increases on this just for the non-union people we don't have any union employees with HR oh, okay. so everybody mm -hmm. across the board is getting a three percent that's only in HR though you said right that's I, just yeah, in I'm HR gonna, I'm gonna ask this question on every department yeah three percent across the board okay thank you yeah that, that is what we have budgeted all yes. right you mentioned Virginia. that there are merit raises. Does everybody get a merit raise or based on their merit? It, it will be based on their merit. That's, that's why I said it's, it's available for us to do. Um, so it will be um, available for merit. Uh, but like I said, there's not one employee I have that's not doing uh, outstanding work. Uh, okay. they, they really have. Um, all the way through the, the pandemic and then the reoccurrence that we've had with the Omicron. And so they are, they've all really stepped up and um, with me handling the, the director, assistant director and, and HR manager roles, they've been able to step in and, and help um, pull some of that load off of me until we get the HR manager hired. Sounds good. Uh, one other thing I have is, is um, you mentioned the new ERP system. I, I caution the mayor on this. ERP systems cost a lot of money. I watched the state squander, man, I can close to a billion dollars on a system. Um, I on on paper they 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 look and sound real good, but if you don't have everybody on the same system, they're not going to work. And most likely, 
your, your, your cost, your ongoing cost for it is going to be just astronomical. Um, so when it's all said and done, what I'd like to know, what I'd like to have uh, when, once we get ready to, for implementation is what it's cost the city uh, because I, I, I know with the state it was, it was insane, the amount of money that it cost. And it, I don't know if it's still implemented. So, yep. yeah, Mayor. Yeah, ours is a, uh, uh, and OBM will probably speak to this, but the financial resource uh, system, and actually it will save us money as far as that goes. I mean, we're, like you said, I think we're on the reverse side of it. Um, so, but I'd like Director McCarty, if he cares to comment on it tonight, or he'll comment it on it next Thursday. All right, that's fine. And Director McCarty wanted me to. Thank you, him. thank you, Chair. Uh, well, I will comment on that real quick. We, we do expect the ERP system to save money. Technology is moving more towards a cloud-based system, and the current one that we have, we're going to have to upgrade anyway, which is going to cost 1.2 or 3 million, I think, is what I saw. We don't anticipate spending as much with the new system, um, certainly no more than that. We hope to spend less. It just depends on which system we end up going with, and we're in an evaluation right now that's going to take, well, I don't have to tell you, Alderman Hanauer, it's going to take quite a bit of time. We've got a lot of hours already invested in it, and we have a lot more to go uh, through demos and evaluations. So the hope is to save money. That's the plan. But I understand from a state perspective, I watched that too, and it got astronomical, no question about it. The other thing that I wanted to answer was uh, uh, Alderman Redpath's question. There are increases. Uh, certainly the union contracts that we know of are in the budget. Uh, as I mentioned in my overview, the uh, contract increases for police and fire are not because those, the fire contracts already open. The police will be open in March. Uh, that is not in the budget. And then in terms of non-union employees, we do have a percentage built in. It's not 3%, though. It's, uh, I think, 2 to 2 and a half. I can I get you the exact number if you want it and send it to you later, but it's in that ballpark, which is in line with what we're settling union contracts for right now. You know, all the ones you've seen before, you're in that range. So we've got the non-union in the same range. So, Director, maybe I ought to get this out of the way now. Why don't you just give us a list of the non-union employees that are getting over a 3% raise? Send that to me in, in, in their time. You don't necessarily need to give us their names, just the titles. Uh, Alderman, are you, do you mean anything that's budgeted over 3% or any time that there is a, an increase over anything that? Anything over 3% in this budget uh, raises, anything over 3%, non-union raises, I want, I want to list them. Okay, I will get with the department directors to see if anybody budgeted anyone over that. Uh, from a global or universal standpoint, I can tell you we did not budget anyone over that, but I will check and get it back to you. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for HR? All right, thank you. You, thank you. you did well on your first time. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll take a two-minute break, and we'll get the uh, library up here. We've been going for 20 minutes. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all know we got to go to the Throw bathroom. Throw it on. Yeah, is there a... Because, like, here it'll tell you what page you're on. Oh, okay. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Do you, so do you want me to get you to the library? No, well, I got the library. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. All I right. just wanted to see if I could help. All right, thank you. I was getting ready to ask you that. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading lines tonight. My job. Might as well, he's going to keep reading. <laughs> How are we doing, Mayor? <clears throat> good. How are you oh, doing, Mayor? You must be good yourself. Huh? Got the uh, new owner for the... Do what? You want to talk about the new owner and the state politics? No, I didn't meet the new owner. I met somebody came by okay. that was here with the, the baseball team. Okay. I'm not sure who this is. I don't know who it was. I can't remember. Kendra. But uh, yeah. Kendra. they were going to... Um, Right. Goes over the limit. He bests the caps. He will. He already, I think he already has. Yeah. yeah. I think it only would permit like suburban to go over the limit after the primary. Uh, when that, he can go. In other words, he can receive unlimited gifts from anybody. In the general exception. I'm not sure. Or uh, yeah. uh, suburban can get unlimited yeah. money. I think he. I think he can. Yeah. 
if he busts the one, if he busts the cap, then I think it's it's a no brainer. Well, one for everybody. Yeah, I've tried to research it and find that conclusion. Because when you think about it, the the primary is competitors are not yet Pritzker. It's the others in the primary. So always been scoring better in location. Griffin can only throw the Matt Carburn one. Oh, yeah. That might not get Irvin past the primary. No, I don't know when it was. Yeah, I think it happened. That's Probably a, a while back, because oh, he just come into your prime over there and rest me. Oh. Should. Boys here. Wait, no. Let's roll. That's it, everybody. Right. Unless it's oh. Sean, but he's right there. Yeah. All right, let's call it back to order. Um, right, the next on the list is Lincoln Library. If you don't mind stating your name so we know who you are up at the podium. Hello, I'm Dominique LaSalvia. I'm the fiscal officer for OBM and the library. So I'll be doing our budget presentation today. I'll start off with our department structure, uh, starting with the mayor all the way down to library pages, which are part-time. We currently have three vacancies um, because as of today, the library assistant for position under adult services manager has been filled, so that just hasn't been updated. And then moving on, our workforce, we've been pretty steady. Um, we're staying at that 41. We currently have uh, 25 of 37 filled that are females, which is 68%, and then our minorities at 32%. <coughs> I'm going to skip over this slide, which Summer will go over in a minute, and I'm going to go to our budget. So some things to point out on here, there is an overall growth of about 518000 A large portion of that, 350000 will be towards our bookmobile, which is funded through a bequest, which Summer will touch on a little bit later. The rest of that growth is represented by uh, increase in personal services. There is an increase in employer share of insurance costs, as well as passive increases in Ask Me Clerical Technical. So that's where those increases come from in the budget. And then now I'm going to hand it off to Summer, who will talk a little bit more about programming in the library. Hi, everyone. I'm Summer Beck Griffith. I'm the community engagement manager for the library. Thank you for um, being patient with us today. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back to comparisons to local, uh, what we would call comps library. You'll notice um, that for being the largest population, uh, we do have one of the lower revenues as well as um, in our population categories are one of the only, or the only in this one, library who does not have either branches or a bookmobile. So that's something that, uh, the word bookmobile is gonna be something that you hear a lot, hopefully tonight. Um, uh, one thing I will point out, this doesn't actually have a pointer, excuse me. One thing I will point out is um, the circulation materials and uh, circulation including digital. When you start comparing apples to apples in terms of how much money is spent on revenue and um, how much expenditures, we really are doing well, particularly in um, including the circulation with digital inclusion. That's something that really, um, as you can imagine, has ramped up in the last year or two. I want to talk a little. I, I think means. you might want to point out that 
uh, Bloomington Normal could be combined in the same way with Champaign-Urbana as far as uh, comparing it to our size city. Yeah, I do actually believe that Champaign and Urbana both have separate libraries as well as Bloomington and Normal. They do. Right. Yeah, so in terms of population, those are, those are each one has a separate entity because um, those would be much larger metropolitan areas. Uh, are they larger than Springfield? No, they are not. Met if they were combined, <laughs> yes, but they are not. So they have separate libraries, um, but both of those metropolitans combined population is larger, but their library serves their specific municipality. But the expenditure on their libraries combined is more than Springfield. Way more. Yes. Okay. That is correct. I do want to um, list the number of accomplishments that the libraries worked really hard on this year. Um, our staff has been incredible and has done a lot with, as you can see, uh, when we go back to the funding, um, we're doing a lot with what we have. Um, some very practical things, both in social media presence <coughs> and engagement. Um, they've doubled, the Instagram followers have doubled, newsletter subscribers have doubled, engagement uh, across social media platforms is way up. In 2022, that um, is really important for what uh, libraries can do to engage the community. Um, we've built partnerships with community organizations. Um, I was tempted to list that out slide upon slide. Uh, I didn't do that to spare us all, but I do want to give you a little bit of a list. I want to make note that our summer reading program, um, every single Compass for Kid um, was involved in our summer reading program. Um, so that bumped up our numbers quite a bit huge, quite a bit huge. We have partnerships um, with the Urban League. We have a children's librarian who goes out weekly. Um, through this last Omicron, we have stepped back from that. So the last month or two, we've stepped back from that. But um, we have partners. We've done library drives with the Urban League and with the Springfield Housing Authority. We have been to Harvest Fest and Summer uh, Housing Authority Outdoor Bounce House Fest. We have worked with the Springfield Art Association. We have partnerships with DSI. We have partnerships with um, just about every one of the community, uh, children's community nonprofits in town. Um, that is something we want to continue to do. We have hosted the city's back to business uh, grant help in our computer lab. That's a way that we can continue to um, focus on workforce development. We have local artists showing their paintings in our library right now. Um, so there's a lot of ways that the library has built out into the community. Um, that's something that we are focused on and will continue to do. Uh, we officially went fine free. And a very, I know the question is coming. It has been less than 1% of fiscal impact. So almost negligible or completely negligible. So that, um, and that when we talk about fine free, that has a lot to be rooted in equity and who gets to use resources at the library. Um, to that end, we kicked off what um, I called the Welcome Back to the Library campaign, where we did an amnesty from September to December and allowing anybody, myself included, who has lost or maybe had a dog chew their children's book, um, able to come back to the library. Because there's a lot of shame when you lose books and people stop coming back. So we've invited everyone back. We did a big campaign. We wiped out up to $50. We had some contingencies if you had more than that, but up to $50. We brought back 182 um, patrons back into the library. We were awarded two very um, promising grants. We have funded a community outreach position um, that we I am working to be uh, hiring very soon. Next week, we're interviewing folks. This position is grant funded. It's a 12 year, excuse me, I wish it was 12 years, guys. Can we fund it for 12 years? Uh, it's a 12 month contract position that will specifically serve wards two, three, and four. Um, the goal in this position is to provide consistent pop-up hours um, with local organizations um, and community, faith communities, so that you know um, every Tuesday afternoon the library is going to be at place X. Um, we have a number of organizations in mind. We just haven't confirmed them, so I'm not going to give those. Um, 
And then additionally, um, 24 grand for 200 new hotspots plus uh, years worth of data. And 50 of those are earmarked explicitly for wards two and three um, with an equity part of that grant built in. Uh, we have diversified our collection with an emphasis on electronic access. We spent two times the amount of ebooks this year um, and expanded our access to Canopy and um, Libby. So Canopy, if you're not on it, has all of the movies that you're missing out on. We launched Lincoln Library app, which is a very cool app that you can put on your phone. It's 2022. If you're in Barnes & Noble's Half Price Books or the Elf Shelf and you want to scan this book, you can scan the barcode and see if your Lincoln Library has it available. So that's pretty cool. And lastly, um, just a big round number, we reached over 10,000 active library users this year. We have some goals. Um, I don't know if I mentioned a bookmobile, but uh, that's one of our goals. We really want to look into the community. Um, the Lincoln Library has not had branches for some time. It is um, one building in the middle of town, and we very, very much want to bring access to resources to all people. Um, so we recently hired a teen outreach librarian, um, or excuse me, that's two positions. We've hired a teen librarian and another person in children's who has an outreach component. So um, our goal is to bring in um, young people and to go out to young people. Um, one of our uh, crown jewels of the Lincoln Library is the Sangamon Valley Collection. So we want to grow. There's some really specific digitizing for council minutes, ordinances, and historical newspapers that really practically be that. And we want to increase STEM workforce development programs and audio vision programming um, for the community. The big question is the Wagner request. Um, that's the million dollars request. That's where the $350,000 for a bookmobile comes into play. That's um, where that is funded. It is not funded from the regular budget. It is funded from the Wagner request. So that is our ask to look for um, what we can do in the community when we have a bookmobile. So we would start the process this year, consult, look into it. It's not a very quick process, but to bring that so that we can bring access to resources to folks. And just so you know, the first Lincoln Library had the first bookmobile in 1939. It was called the Traveling Branch. It was a uh, renovated Airstream. And I would really like everyone to look at a picture. So I'm going to be sending those out because it's really beautiful. There was also a bibliobus in the 70s that was actually decorated with flowers. Hmm. Uh, I will do my best to answer questions. All right. Woman <clears throat> purchase. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you for sharing everything on social media, too, because it helps us to share it out to the community. Thank and I know you. I do a lot of sharing on the information. You do, and I love it. <laughs> thank you. My, uh, my second question, well, first question is, um, how did you choose those wards, two, three, and four? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, the, uh, what I uh, chose is because we looked at the numbers of which zip codes and which wards we could we had two different sets of data, so we kind of extrapolated it to look at who we had the, which wards had the lowest library card holders and lowest active library card users. Gotcha. So we were going after those who we are um, objectively just not doing a good job reaching. Okay. And then the second question is, how will the bookmobile work? Are you going to send out more information about that? I know you have a big requests on it. Yeah, so that is something that um, we're going to do our best with. It was an idea that had been presented, my understanding, in 2019. We've kind of rolled it around for a little bit. It wasn't in the budget. It is now in the budget. And um, we're going to be doing our best to move forward. So the entire answer is I can't give you a full answer because I don't know what the future holds right now. But I do know that the library is committed to figuring out how to do a best practice. So it'll be consulting, it'll be talking to other libraries who have done it. It'll be talking to what the, uh, you know, hearing from the communities and neighborhood associations about what they want in a bookmobile. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number, you know, there's the, just like RVs, there's a class A, there's something that looks like a taco truck, there's something that looks like a van, you know, which, um, and then knowing that we live in a world where, um, uh, 
COVID may or may not, maybe we don't want people going into a small space. So maybe we want to look into redesigning and outward facing. So this will be something that we have to do. My guess is we start the process this year. And um, if we're lucky, we end the process, but we're going to make a go of it. I, I would hope. just ask one request um, with that dollar amount, anything you can think of that you can provide us on what you're looking at doing. Yeah, absolutely. How you're, when are you going to start going out to the neighborhood associations to assess and ask for that information? Just so we have a little bit when we're making that decision. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And good job. Thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. On the red path. So if you put the book, book mobile out, are you going to have to in, increase your staff? Is it? That's a gonna... very good question. Um, the answer is first no and then yes. Um, <laughs> I am a if we build it, they will come kind of person. I, we want to get it out. Our hope is that the community says this is something we want and we need, and um, we follow the community's needs. We know that there's a big needs, and what the library provides is free access to all resources for people. So at this point, we're not asking for increase. We have increased teens. We have, um, we're, we're looking towards that. We want to work with um, organizations, volunteers. We're going to do our best and try to make this a community-wide effort and um, help Springfield be proud of its library's bookmobile. Eventually, if it would be up to me, the answer is yes. Um, but at this point, we're not. Uh, second question. Yeah. Um, you said you had 10,000 contacts or, or users of the library? Yeah, active users. So how many year. came to the library and how many are, how many are online? Um, I think we have that. That's a good question. If it's, if it's not in this slide, I will have to get that number for you. Um, we always ask that question of the, of the library just to see how much usage we're getting. Yeah, so if you look up here, um, and, and I will be very frank um, to I had very, I did not have a ton of time to prepare for today um, in presenting. So uh, I will tell you my understanding, the best I understand, is that these numbers, the circulation materials, are hard copies um, of books, magazines, CDs, movies. Um, we also have a number of items that you can check out, uh, Library of Things, as we call it. And then the total circulation, including digital, is the 518,000 numbers. That seems like a lot of people are walking in. No, he's a talking. lot of people are walking into the library. <laughs> a lot of people are still using curbside. Wow. So. Wow. wow. Any other questions? Alderwoman DeCenso. Thank you. Um, I just want to say I'm all on board for the bookmobile. I think it would be great to have, you know, there's so many community festivals, especially in the summer, obviously. Um, you know, Bites on the Boulevard, Boulevard would be a great place for the bookmobile. Um, people have block parties. It's, it would be Absolutely. a welcome addition. Um, and from everything we see, people want it. Um, I want to thank you for keeping the library open during COVID. Even if it's just curbside, it was a val va very valuable resource to so many people. So I want to say thank you to the library staff for going that extra mile. And I know it was difficult sometimes, and I know you have challenges. Um, and third, I just want to say that I want this library to be a destination as it is in other cities. I grew up here, and I would make up excuses to go to the library because I thought it was a cool place to hang out. And I wasn't, you know, a total nerd. Um, <laughs> I'd meet my boyfriend there, and we'd work on homework, and you know, mm -hmm. allegedly. But um, you know, I, I really totally. want I want that to come back because I think it's important. I think it's important for the community, totally. and I think if we're going to be competitive, because right now we're not, and you know, that's partially because you're you're super underfunded. So we need to work on that going forward. Yeah. Thank you. And I want to thank the library staff, the circulation staff really takes the, the burden of that. Well, Alderwoman Conley, I think, and then uh, Alderman McMinley. Thank, thank you, Chair. And thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Um, I, I, I just, before I ask a question, I just want to share um, some of the feedback that I've gotten about the library recently. I hear, I have, people reach out and talk about what an important part of our community the library is, how 
the services and the programs that you provide. I, I try to share them as often as I can yeah, when, yeah. when I see them because our library has been doing so many fun and creative things for this city. Absolutely. Um, you know, I love the, the arts and crafts projects to go. I'm, um, for some people, um, cr doing your own arts and craft project is, is a task that is insurmountable. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, and, and I know for, for, for families, this has been a big deal. Um, you know, the library has been there to engage our community over the last, especially the last year, over the last, I guess, two years. We've, we've had COVID and all of these challenges. So I please let, um, you know, the library staff know that the hard work is, is, is seen and appreciated. Um, Thank you. The most common concern is um, why the city is not funding our library as well as other communities do. Um, and we can see that, you know, we see we, we have lower funding and, and, and you point out in here, you know, that um, all of these libraries except Lincoln Library uh, are supported by property tax revenue. So, I mean, and that's an important consideration to, ta to take into the calculations, but um, I am also very supportive of this bookmobile. I would hope that you don't limit yourself. I, I, I'm hoping you've come into Ward 8. Oh, absolutely. It's not exclusive. It is not exclusive by any means. We will be on the west side at the Wine and Dines. We will be, you know, that's our goal well, and, is to and, be inclusive. You know, I have, with, with the grade schools and, yeah. um, you know, my, absolutely. Husband's grade, my husband's a grade school teacher. And I know absolutely. the importance of getting these books into children's hands. Absolutely. In a variety of books. So I, I do hope that, you know, that's one thing that is included in this budget. We didn't talk about it a whole lot, but um, what are you looking at in terms of new purchases for, for books, especially for young readers and and lower reading levels? Are we looking at increased purchases this year? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that, but I can look at the answer to that. Thank and you. Get, I, I would appreciate that. And get that. back to you. I know that the children's staff does a phenomenal job um, going out of its way to make sure that there are um, diversity in the books. We are partnering, um, coming up at the end of February, partnering for Black Children's Book Week. Um, you know, we are committed to uh, diversity in our reading, and that's an area that we're not afraid to spend money on. I know that. Specifics, I'll get it. I'll make sure we get that to you. I, I would appreciate that yeah, because there's certainly, you, um, <laughs> you know, one thing we know that there, there are still authors out there who are turning out some really wonderful works, oh, and I'd like to books. see um, see more of that. So just, um, again, thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, and, and please share our appreciation. I will, I will absolutely. Um, and for my constituents, um, for the value that the library has has brought. And um, I will echo Alderwoman DeCenso. I'd like to see the library enhanced. Um, I was a nerd in high school. Sorry. You know, no one can guess no. that now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and, but I just want to say, it's, it's important that we elevate our library and, and make this a, a more critical part of our, the community because people absolutely are calling out for that. I agree, Alderman. Alderman McMenamin. Thank you for stepping up to give this report as community engagement manager. Joe, Joe, microphone. Microphone. Thank you. <coughs> you just Thank turned you. it off. Good. There you go. Some tricks are hard to learn when you just had a 69th birthday. But at any rate. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa. Yeah. Happy birthday, Joe. <laughs> Today? 69. Um, Thank you for stepping up to give this report. And uh, your community engagement manager. That is correct. And your name again? It's please. Summer Beck Griffith. Summer Beck Griffith. Okay, in, in real brief, to get the library out there in the neighborhoods and such, I think it would be great if the library could uh, coordinate with our school district, especially, Absolutely. especially the high schools and the middle schools. I think it's a way to get um, books closer to many more people Absolutely. in all the different neighborhoods. Yeah, we are very excited. We just um, hired a teen librarian who has a lot of experience uh, in social media and running Zoom programs um, in a number of different capacities. So we're, we're really thrilled about that. We've hired, uh, again, another outreach um, in the children's area. So we are looking to the future to be absolutely you know, boots on the ground in that aspect. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Donlin. 
Old McGregory, did you did you? Yeah, I got okay, I got you next. Then it's all good. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and Summer. Again, I, I would like to echo also. Thanks for the presentation this evening. Uh, I learned I learned something tonight. That, good. The thing about the app that's a really big deal. It's cool, man. <laughs> and uh, whatever we can do to help promote it. I, I Absolutely. Have to I have to confess, though, I, I did I did not I, I liked the uh, Facebook page just now, so I, I hadn't done oh. that before. So I don't know why. I, I, can't I it out, run but, social media. Yeah. So older men, you're uh, breaking my heart. <laughs> I will do my. I will. I will make a commitment to share. Uh, share. Thank the you. Post, we appreciate uh, that as much as possible. But uh, in all seriousness, the the audio book apps. I use those religiously. Yeah, in the, absolutely. In particular, in the summer months when I'm outside a lot, and mm -hmm. those are very helpful. Anything we can do to help promote those kind of things. Yeah, not absolutely. Just hard books. Other so hard books are extremely important. Like the, what you mentioned on the app, but uh, whatever we can do to help. So yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Alderman Gregory. I just wanted to say thank you. I I, I do know this book, uh, mobile, uh, was a big topic for particularly uh, uh, Donna Brown and IMAX Nation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very very excited about it, and and I promised her that when this did come by, I would support it fully. As you know, uh, uh, literacy in, in in the community I represent is is very. Uh, can get get better, you know, 60% of all low-income children can't That's afford cool. to have books. So I appreciate the thoughtfulness of, of, of trying to get some of that over to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, one, one last thing. Um, you did say that the, the, your jewel up there is the, Crown, the Sangman Valley Collection. And, Absolutely. And I, I, I've, I've used it um, in, you know, through the family, came up for, for uh, <laughs> ancestry, you know, yeah, look at ancestry and whatnot. Um, I think that if there's a way we can publicize that more and mm -hmm. even have seminars on, um, on, on like your, your, yeah. So they do hold programs stuff. because people do, um, people are really kind of into that. Some people, you know, I think a lot more, um, I didn't realize how vast that the uh, Sangman Valley collection was. It is really cool. You can actually go up and you can pull up Lamphere's uh, yearbook and see, Alderman Redpath back in the <laughs> when they didn't do color. So um, my yearbook so. picture is in there. Yes. Called so. you old. Yeah, anyway. absolutely. The FCC, we also hold um, the state general register archives because they don't hold our we, yeah. we hold their archives going back to when it was the state yeah. journal and the register. But thank you very much. And is there any other questions? All right, we'll take two minutes and get uh, Thanks, Nate up here thank and uh, Public Works will be Good next. Job. Good job. Yeah, when was your birthday? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. For new new books. How old is Lynn? Do the same age. Are you high school sweethearts? No, we got to know each other in. You and I now at a birthday party five, years, six years later. Being reconnected. You're kidding. I love it. Well, there's a long story to it, but holy, wait a minute here. This is longer than a card. I like hearing this stuff, Joe. You don't have to go this long. I said, I like hearing this stuff. Like, I, I like hearing people's stories. Their marriage stories, or how they met, or how they reconnected. How many, how many pages is that? I'm going, oh, I can say. Yeah. I'm going one. I'm going one more than whatever that is. <laughs> this is the McCarty. Hey, I think John and McCarty put this together. I know that's a little light. That's, light. that's heavy. It's very, this is the McCarty one, man. You ever, <laughs> Leadership. Nate's been hanging out now with me. He wants some tips. Yeah. <laughs> well, the tip is oh, 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 the tip is fly through it. Tip is go fast. I said the chair loves long. We don't need the engineering. Uh, make sure that you uh, take your time. He loves details. Uh -huh. There you go. Thank you, doll. You're welcome. And there was a comic, a graphic I've been using that library since, I mean, I've not gotten in high school because I was hanging out at other places. I wasn't here, but <laughs> I mean, my kids grew up in that library. And it's, it's, and really, it's a support. I've been hearing lots of support from, from my constituents. <laughs> How long have you been there? About a year. I'm, I'm close. Like, you're up to your, uh, you know, high 
high school, college, grad school. No way. Where'd you go to high school? Yes, I know that. <laughs> yep. I know how that works. <laughs> right. We'll proceed as soon as Alderman Fulgenzi gets back. Are we waiting on Alderman Donnellan? What's that? I said, don't you have to You should. Well, Miss Hamlet, you got food and everything. Other than the rappers. Oh, Chuck, how old are you? How old are you? 65. 65, okay. I graduated in 74. I was born in 72. <laughs> <laughs> you were born in 71. All right, let's go get back to in order, and uh, you can talk about the birthdays later when you're, <laughs> when you're born. Um, Nate, you want to? Are you ready? I'm ready. I uh, I got your pound of. Uh, of uh, <laughs> I'll try to fly through it. Slides. So. Don't, don't go too quickly. All right. First off, I want to thank the great men and women that uh, do the job day in and day out. Uh, the Rogger Department. They do. They do a truly amazing job. And I want to thank you, Mayor and Council Members, for your support um, throughout the year and uh, during these troubling times. All right. Um, so we have 13 different divisions. Uh, we have the streets division, traffic division, and sewer division. Those are the three that you see out in the field a lot of times, uh, putting up the traffic division, putting up barricades, streets division, potholes, um, taking that, trimming trees, and sewer uh, repairing our, our sewers, uh, jetting sewers out. Our building, zoning, and housing divisions are all grouped under zoning for budgeting purposes. Um, but the, you know, they, uh, uh, do their various tasks very well. Um, and then we also have the engineering division, GIS uh, systems division, uh, the motor vehicle parking, Oak Ridge Cemetery, second most visited cemetery, waste and recycling division, the facilities maintenance division. Um, so uh, we used to have 248, um, our headcount is FY08, and then we had the Great Recession, and we've uh, been, been cut over the years. However, we are trying to ramp back up and provide higher levels of service. Uh, we are looking at adding an additional six employees this year. Um, in regards to our workforce numbers, um, since 2015, our minority numbers have jumped up substantially uh, from 16.1% to 23.5%. Um, and then uh, in regards to our uh, m management role, since I became director, um, they've jumped up substantially. In, in minorities, it was 11.1%, and it's now 27.8%, as well as the females, it was 5.6%, and is up now up to 33.3%. Uh, in regards to our budget, uh, as you can see, um, there's some fairly uh, uh, hefty increases in, in a couple of the different lines. Uh, <laughs> in our personal services, it's up uh, almost 9%, as well as contractual services is up uh, 27%, about a million and a half. Uh, and our equipment uh, is up to, as well as in our, in our major, the major item is permanent improvements, and I'll get to it in uh, each corporate and non-corporate here, here in a moment. Um, as you can see, allocation-wise, the majority of our budget, is six, over 63%, is uh, permanent improvements, um, followed by personal services uh, for, for our employees and then contractual services. Uh, in regards to the corporate budget, um, we do have an increase in our headcount by six. Uh, we are looking at adding... A, plan, a plans examiner and an engineer, as well as we want to add a street sweeper crew in order to uh, prove our level of service uh, in that category, which um, helps with preventative maintenance as well as uh, localized flooding uh, in our neighborhoods. Uh, and we also are having a, a plumber transferred over into our department from, uh, from the fire department. It just makes more sense for that person to be in facilities maintenance, um, helping uh, with the plumbing in all of our facilities. Let's see. 
And then um, in, in regards to contractual services, we are looking at uh, leasing some street sweepers, uh, approximately $180,000 is what we have budgeted for that. Uh, we also did not get to do our fall tree planning, so we're, um, we're rolling 50,000 over into next year's budget for that. We also are looking at um, planting about over 140 trees and adding 140 planters and 140 uh, ornamental grass in, in the downtown area to help beautify that, help spur economic development, make it more inviting for, uh, for businesses as well as for tourists. Uh, and also uh, $265,000 in the contractual lines is demo related because uh, we're looking at uh, doing approximately 70 demos. Um, com commodities are up just uh, due to uh, additional supplies for masks uh, and then fuel costs are up. So that's why the auto, you see the auto equipment. And then the $6 million, that's the larger one. That is uh, directly related to the ARPA funds for road modernization. Uh, and and I, just, I just basically hit on, hit on those points. And there's our uh, breakdown in the corporate fund, as you can see, um, over half is uh, related to the, um, to the permit improvements. Uh, and then in regards to the non-corporate fund items, uh, the personal services is up, just that's mainly due to uh, benefits. And the contractual services increased. Um, that's uh, mainly due to uh, fuel costs to, and uh, our waste and recycling programs increasing uh, because of those fuel costs and inflation. Um, and we are um, looking at getting a higher level of service, though, um, due to those increases by going to a, um, a, a two-day window uh, pickup for the yard waste. Uh, and our commodities are up. Um, that's um, related to uh, memorial markers uh, and sales markers is a contributing factor um, for that, for Oak Ridge Cemetery, uh, as well as equipment. Um, Oak Ridge is looking at purchasing a van, uh, and the sewer division is looking at purchasing a, a couple of actor trucks. We may only get one this year. Uh, and then as well as a TV truck. And then we also are looking at opening up our own yard waste facility and we have a million dollars budgeted for, uh, for a tub grinder and end loader. Uh, auto equipment is up because of fuel cost increases and our permanent improvements are up substantially. Uh, we have two and a half million dollars allocated for IEPA loan, uh, $8 million uh, for uh, sewer lining, uh, lake sewer project for Linden Lane and the overhead sewer program as well as the lake sewer study. Uh, we also have 750,000 budgeted for the fourth and Washington ramp demo, and, um, 6.3 million of rebuild funds, which will include Stanford and downtown signal modernization project and $30 million, uh, I say approximately $30 million is rail related, which we're being reimbursed 100% for, uh, for usable segments three, four, and five, and then uh, 1.15 million for uh, yard waste facility setup. Uh, so. It's been a, been a busy year. Uh, we've, we've had a lot of success. Um, we did another uh, $12 million worth of maintenance uh, projects, including 12 miles of overlay, 14 miles of seal coat streets, five miles of concrete patching, a mile of brick streets. Uh, and then I'm really happy with our preventative maintenance measures on the right side, which are the three miles of the restorative sealer, the nine miles of the Reclamite rejuvenator, two miles of bituminic mastic, and the 26 miles of crack filling. Uh, and we also had some larger uh, road projects and railroad and bridge projects that were completed this year. Uh, Chatham Road overlay between Old Jack to Jefferson was completed. Uh, we opened the Laurel Street underpass and uh, we completed Drawbridge Road bridge uh, reconstruction this year as well as uh, the very popular Walnut Street Road diet. Uh, and um, we, we're continuing work on 5th and 6th Street underpass. We just started the work on Cook and South Grand with demos and utility relocates. Uh, in regards to our operational performance, Oak Ridge performed uh, 200, um, increased their burials there up to 257 and they brought in $1.14 million in revenue. Uh, I think that was up from 925,000 uh, in 2019. Uh, they also launched the GIS uh, interactive map for um, locating graves and uh, replaced the Monument Avenue gate fencing. Uh, we also uh, completed 3,900 service requests and over 2,000 Julie tickets were processed. Uh, um, our work orders were increased by nearly a thousand from 2019, not really, and even more from 2020. However, we were hit with COVID there, which uh, over 2,400 were housing housing issues that we addressed. 1,600 were streets, 1,400 sewer, 900 traffic, 704 street, 300 drainage, 250 sidewalk, and 60 alleys. 
Uh, we have over 5,000 building permits to um, value, valuing over $160 million worth um, and projects on the building side that were reviewed. And uh, we also had 63 zoning cases, which is about on par for what we normally have. However, the complaints were substantially up since people, since people were off, I think from uh, approximately around 500 we normally have, and they're up to 735. And our housing uh, division addressed over 7,400 complaints, which was also substantially, I think over 20% than what we normally do. And we collected $121,000 in fines. And in regards to demos, we substantially increased those from the previous two years with 45 uh, being demolished by our own city crews. Uh, thanks to the help of our housing division and corporation council, we, 26 uh, were demoed by owners um, who we issued notification to uh, in order to address, and 18 were repaired, so we didn't have to utilize any of our resources to them, and they were able to get agreed orders to repair, and they repaired them. And we had a successful quarterly branch pickup that was very popular. Uh, in regards to community engagement, we are, we are very involved. Um, we have numerous open houses for our various capital projects, for the rail improvements project. We try to have two, uh, two a year. Uh, and then we also had a public meeting for Headley and West White Oaks Drive to improve that very dangerous intersection, uh, looking at adding a three quarters access and a roundabout a little bit further to the north. Uh, we also had the uh, Lawrence Avenue and uh, Walnut and Lawrence and MacArthur Safety Improvements open house. We were also, um, we got a lot of feedback on that and we were planning on having a subsequent meeting. We're looking at doing some adjustments, see what we can do to minimize the impact uh, and um, develop some more models so that uh, we, can, we can sit down and come up with the best solution for, for the neighborhood and the city as a whole. Uh, as well as um, we are working closely with uh, IDOT and I'm on the CAG for the MacArthur Boulevard project from South Grand Avenue to Wabash Avenue. We continue to work with them to push that project forward. And uh, we also are involved in various neighborhood association meetings, ward meetings, and, uh, and we were, we're also been working with the ICON group in order to improve our processes, including the registration process. Uh, in regards to community events, too, um, Adina does a great job. We do a lot of outreach. Um, we hosted a pumpkin smash this year, uh, as well as the household hazardous waste went very smooth. And um, we also, um, with COVID, we did a hybrid, um, a hybrid Earth Day fair um, out at the out at the zoo, and it and it was very very well attended both, and, and worked out well as well as the Arbor Day uh, tree giveaway. Uh, in regards to our goals this upcoming year, in regards to maintenance, we're um, going to do about the same amount of overlays, we're, but we're substantially trying to increase our preventative maintenance uh, programs, including 30 miles of crack filling, 2 miles of rest of ceiling, 10 miles of uh, reclamite, and 5 miles of pressure pave. That's a new one we're going to try out this year for, um, for roads that are rated around a 5 or a 6, and 125,000 square feet of sidewalk and 100 ramps. Programs. Uh, in regards to our major roads and bridge projects, uh, Stanford Avenue, we are trying to shoot for a March or April letting for that project and getting the utility relocates even started ahead of them, uh, as well as the downtown traffic signal modernization that has been awarded and uh, we you just need to have the pre-construction meeting. Uh, for that, and we'll get the ball rolling this spring. Uh, Churchill Road Bridge, we're also shooting for a March letting for that project. Uh, an 8th Street Bridge, we will try to let later in the uh, later in the spring. That's the one by the same county water reclamation district plant. Uh, 5th and 6th Street underpass com, uh, should be completed late, probably late summer, early fall is the goal. Uh, and then Cook and South Grand, uh, we, we are, will continue to work on those uh, projects. And Madison and Jefferson underpass, we just uh, <coughs> recommended a ward for that project, and we'll um, look at trying to get that uh, that started here in, here in the spring. Uh, Hilltop Road and multi -use, the multi-use trail will will also start this spring. Should wrap up in the summer. And the Chatham Road asphalt conversion um, we have on our program from Jefferson to North Grand, and then we also have the IGA the intergovernmental agreement from Barbary told Jack to complete their portion the portion for Leland Grove. Uh, and then uh, I'm not going to run through the list, but uh, we've had uh, meetings with all of you aldermen. Um, you can <coughs> see all the different streets that we've discussed. Uh, um, that we, we looked at the ADT, if schools were around there, if they were linking commercial districts, as well as the complaints we just received from you when uh, assessing the oil and chip to asphalt conversions, which uh, we are budgeting, uh, requesting $6 million worth of ARPA funds for. <coughs> And then in regards to the uh, sewer infrastructure, we also are planning on um, tr over tripling our overhead sewer reimbursement program. 
uh, which is very popular. You can convert your house if um, you're having backups in your basement. You can convert it. Um, we, we're asking, adding 300,000 to that, as well as uh, we have the US EPA order. So we're planning on doing a lot of the lining and grouting in the northeast area, as well as various projects throughout the city uh, that you can see you can see listed. Um, and that also includes a lot in the in the downtown area too. Some of our oldest streets and large sewers are in the downtown area, and they need to be relined. And then there, there, there is lining needed in some of the older subdivisions as well and older areas, which you can see on this list. Uh, in regards to design engineering, uh, we're continuing to work on usable segment six, uh, the North Grand underpass, and we're actually adding the overpass to the project. We believe we can leverage additional funding or we're gonna try to go for a, a very large uh, federal grant too. We believe we can get both projects done. It can cut off over a year in construction possibly two years, um, I think we believe we'll get better, better bids and just due to the way inflation is going, the quicker you can get the project done, the, the, the better it is, uh, especially with um, in, increases potentially of 12%. Um, our, our, our bid, our last bids came in 12% higher and I'm, I don't know how much worse inflation is gonna go, especially with the uh, steel prices. Uh, Cokie Mill Road, Old Jack to Washington Street. Um, we just had a coordination meeting uh, with uh, CMT yesterday and we are planning on holding a public meeting uh, probably in, in March or April, which we'll, we'll coordinate with you um, in order to uh, get feedback on that and so that we can move ahead with design and then get into the land acquisition and, and hopefully let within, within a year and a half. Great. Uh, and then uh, MLK Drive, Clear Lake to South Grand Avenue. We just selected the consultant to do the design on that. Uh, that's uh, I'm looking at doing a road diet uh, to improve the safety uh, and enhance that area. And uh, Lawrence Avenue, MacArthur Boulevard, and Walnut, and Sa I, already, I already talked about that project. Um, Headley Road, West White Oaks to Cokie Mill, I already hit, hit on that one as well. Adloff Lane Drainage, Wheeler and Adams will be selecting consultants in the next month, and we plan on trying to wrap that design up this year. And we also are coordinating various uh, large projects with IDOT that will substantially improve the, the safety and capacity um, of, the, of the city including Sixth Street widening, uh, Stevenson Drive, uh, multi-use trail improvements, bike and pedestrian improvements, as well as the Sangamon and, and Dirksen dual lanes. Uh, our goals for Oak Ridge is to increase memorial and prenade sales by 20%, as well as in, uh, increasing outreach. Uh, we're also planning on substantially completed GIS mapping by adding over 78,000 plots to that map. Uh, parking, we're looking at implementing a pay by phone app to improve convenience as well as pilot smart parking meters, uh, maybe approximately 50. We'll try in a couple of the heavier um, downtown areas, two or three blocks in the downtown area, as well as um, our yard waste branch pickup. Um, we, uh, we will be bringing that to council here shortly. And uh, we've talked to Republic, they're willing to do a two day window for the majority of the year. However, we will give them a, a grace for the, the busier peak four weeks in spring and, the, and the four weeks in fall, but I anticipate they should be on the two day window the majority of the time, but uh, we, we've agreed to that and that's part of the exhibit and the contract that should be coming to you shortly. Um, as well as um, we are also uh, planning on continuing the quarterly branch pickup and we also want to continue the tree asset inventory. It's very important to have biodiversity, knowing what trees you have so that, um, so that if we get hit with a disease such as Aramal ash borer, we'll, we'll be in better shape. As well as the downtown trees, planters and landscaping that I already mentioned with 140 plus planters, trees and, uh, and, and ornamental grass, as well as uh, planting 500 trees annually throughout the city of Springfield. Uh, in regards to new initiatives, uh, the fourth and Washington demo is, uh, we're proposing to demolish that and we have bids and that's in, in front of you at um, upper council consideration. It's past the end of its useful life. Uh, it's very dangerous. We'd hate to have an incident like what happened down in Florida and we, we wanna make sure we get that, that, that building down uh, in a timely manner. As well as the, you the yard waste, uh, we are also, um, considering a, a yard waste compost facility and purchasing the land this year and then um, doing the site preparation for it. Um, you know, Evans isn't gonna necessarily be around forever, but uh, we, we do wanna play, take a, a, a phased approach in order to get ready to um, have our own facility up and running as well as providing a composting option uh, with that. Uh, we're not gonna be able to take um, compost the entire material, uh, but, but we at least wanna have that option for, for our community. Uh, and then uh, and we also are planning on doubling our, our demolitions to 70. Uh, in regards to enhanced surfaces, I mentioned that we want to get on a street sweeping cycle, adding 
adding additional street sweepers, as well as adding two operating engineers to run the street sweepers and, and a truck driver laborer to be a follow truck to, to help out. Uh, with those operations uh, and adding a plans examiner and an engineer so that we can expedite, expedite our reviews. Our reviews have been taking a little bit longer than we would like, so we want to try to get down to a 10-day window for our reviews for our commercial building permits, as well as um, the engineer will be able to help with our final inspections and reviewing our site plans, as well as our subdivisions and helping with uh, permitting our, some of our smaller drainage and road projects. That also helps for secession planning too. Uh, and also in regards to that, um, sometimes in regards to building permits, we get hit pretty hard. Sometimes we only have $3 million worth of valuation. And then uh, one month we had $40 million. So we want to have some flexibility by utilizing a, an architect, contractually um, have a contract with them so that they can review uh, so, that, so that we can keep our building permits close to that 10-day that window that, that we want to have. And then uh, we also are planning on, unfortunately, we've just been went down with staff on the on the building side. So the online permit and plan review, we were wanting to roll that out this year. However, it's it we just have to continue to get the building permits out. And then um, having that contractual option with the architects will allow us to have our staff focus on getting the permit and plan review out this summer, is my estimate, as well as we're uh, working on the design for the one-stop shop to, to wrap that up. And then eventually letting that project. In regards to uh, transparency, uh, we, we definitely try to be as transparent as possible and very open, and our department's very open with what we do, uh, but uh, we, we want to continuously improve and, and get the word out there uh, with everything we do. So in regards to the registration list, granted we only have maybe 50, 50 properties that are on there, however, that doesn't uh, encompass all the occupancy prohibited ones that we have cases on and are taken to court. Um, so, so that will add another, estimating a couple hundred properties basically to that list so that we're being transparent showing that hey we are working on these even if there isn't necessarily a registration case um but we, we are working on these and taking taking them to court in essence and, and when we are aware of them uh, as well as adding the demo list uh, to to the website we also are planning on um, adding our pavement surface materials so that anybody can see where, where the different our composition of our streets as well as actually the ratings of our streets too we utilize the pacer manual um, road ratings and we want to go ahead and show everybody what the roads are rated throughout the throughout the city um, and then, as well as add our capital improvement plan um, that's a to get on this summer or fall. Um, I get all our entire capital improvement plan map onto the website, as well as um, I already mentioned the Oak Ridge Cemetery map that they're working hard on. And we also are revamping the reporter problem thanks to ISD. Um, Patrick has done a really good job helping Riley and, and our staff out. Um, we're going to be able to attach pictures shortly, as well as geolocate uh, where the problems are. Somebody can just drop a pin or type in an address. You can attach pictures now. It's one of the big complaints we get about the reporter problem, as well as um, once you do that, it's automatically going to generate a service request. And then, you, and then you will also get an automatic email update. A service request has been created. Your service request has been evaluated. A work order has been uh, created so that we can be more transparent and, uh, and let people know the status of the various permits. Oh, thanks. That's all I have. Mr. Chair. All right, hold on a second. Uh, before I, I, I go around, I would ask that we try to keep things to the budget and not let's not get into individual projects per per ward. Um, that's something you can take offline. We just had meetings with them. Otherwise, we'll be here until next Christmas. So uh, I would ask that. So uh, with that, I'm gonna I'm just gonna start with with Alderman Redpath, and we'll just go all the way around. How's that? Because I'm sure great. everybody's got questions for. <laughs> For Nate, is that that fair? Let's not repeat. I'll even include either. the mayor on this. So, uh, Alderman Redpath. Well, Nate, this is a well-prepared budget. You, uh, I can, you can tell you put a lot of hard work into it, and uh, it hasn't snowed yet, so I haven't had to yell at you at all. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I put my snowblower. I put my snowblower on my patio so it won't snow. So. I appreciate that. Keep it there. But uh, <laughs> back to the yard waste. Uh, uh, facility that we're going to buy the way I look at the budget I'm seeing that we're going to uh, we're setting aside a million dollars for the purchase of the land a million dollars for uh, equipment eight hundred thousand dollars for site improvement and that's not including uh, how many employees that we might have to have to run that have you calculated that or is you you just you clarified a little bit that this was the start of the of the process because of our contract with Evans who, who by the way is a been a good contract for us over the years and done a great job for us at, and a lot of it at their own expense. So uh, could you explain that, please? 
Yeah, I agree. And, and yeah, Rex has been a great, great partner. And I, be, I believe it would, in essence, be a phased approach. And I've, I've talked to Rex about it, which um, we would look at various options. Um, we, we wouldn't need any employees this year because um, we would just be doing the purchase, the uh, due diligence, and the engineering uh, this year. And then we were looking at doing the, the site preparation towards the latter part of the year uh, if, if we get there. Um, so, so we would just be getting that done. We wouldn't, and then I, my guess is it would be a, probably a year before uh, lead time before we could even get the equipment. So we do not need any personnel and we weren't budging any personnel um, in, in this budget. Okay, and uh, next question is, uh, uh, we talked about the street sweepers. You're gonna purchase one and we're gonna lease two. Is that what you're saying? We're, we're actually evaluating it. Um, we just opened up bids and, um, and we may look at actually getting rid of uh, one of ours or even two of ours and then um, buying buying one or two and then leasing a couple. So we, we definitely want to have four running, uh, but um, we're, we're in the process of evaluating that and we'll, we'll make them the best decision for for the department. We, so, may, we may look at actually be getting rid of getting rid of a couple of them. So another question I have is that I'm going to ask you about salary increases. I've, I've asked some others and I see that you've got five major salary increases coming to your uh, and I'm talking about double digits, three in your part and two in the cemetery. So do you make those decisions on who gets those raises or that come from OMB or the mayor? Uh, we we discuss them. Okay. Well, we, we, we discuss them and I can, I I'm can not going to talk about those right now. Okay. We'll talk about them later, but sure. I, I've checked all those out. I know, I know what the increases are and it's pretty big. So be prepared for that. Yep, we, we um, you know, people take on additional responsibilities and um, hard workers and everything along those lines and some, some people do. do we'll talk about the compensated. numbers later. Okay. I want to get into it tonight. Thanks. Sounds good. Is that Alderman Gregory? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Nate. Uh, I, I appreciate the information on the money. It's time. That's, that's, that's what I appreciate. You, your mic isn't on, I don't think, Sean. Mm. Hello. Yeah, there you oh. go. Um, thank you for the uh, minority hiring numbers. That's always something good to hear, uh, uh, especially the increases, uh, uh, definitely. Um, demos uh, on, on the question, have you guys thought about, you know, since we are taking down 70 more um, houses or buildings or structures um, next year, have we, have we taken into account the manpower that's going to be needed to, you know, take care of them, cut the grass, because you know they're going to be calling. I think that's something big that we need to make sure we got enough in there. Um, the lots that we already have, the crews that you got, you know, they get to them, but they can definitely use some help. So I think taking on 80 more, we need to look at that. Um, I'm happy to hear about the first stop, stop shop and the um, the other con the other new hires to sort of speed things up with perm with the permitting process. Um, I think that's something that we've had multiple conversations on this year. We've had you know a couple some uh, <laughs> residents come up and complain about those things. So I, I, I think uh, that and plus the one stop shop will help us alleviate some of those problems. So I'm happy to see that uh, in this year's budget. So I appreciate you, sir. Thank you, Alderman Williams. Do you have anything? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, um, and thank you, Director, for coming. Um, this, this area always gets me riled up, but I'm gonna keep it to just two things for right now. I'm, I'm new at this, but there's two things I'm not hearing that really disturb me when I'm out there in my ward trying to get things done. The first deals with vacant lots, and, 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 it's, and it's whether it's a city-owned vacant lot or a private vacant lot. I, I can't find in this budget where to, and I know tonight's not amendments, but I can kind of plant the seed to where I'm going. I, I want some money to be set aside, to be spent on getting big branches for people who can't afford them, whether it's a city lot or a private lot. These are pretty big branches that are down and they have been down, their eyesores are just there and I would like them removed. I've stopped some of your crews that had a work ticket, they're out to do a specific thing and they'll say, well, Alderman, we're here to do just, you know, and we're bypassing right where I'm saying, but there it is right there, and that's even a city lot. They still won't do it. So this year, if I can get some money set aside for a city-wide, because probably all of our wards have this, this situation where there's some, some big branches down that we know the people either can't afford or whatever the situation is, uh, we can get some of these trees up because we got some big ones. So that's one uh, uh, and I got to learn how to do this to see if we can get some money for that that you. type of a program. The second thing is uh, repetitive. I call it repetitive work 
So during the summer, I'm, I'm on Daryl, and we're going back and forth because these calls come in. I have to get this grass cut or get these, these trees trimmed or whatever it might be because we know the person's in jail. Do We know the person's in a nursing home. We know it's not going to get done, but if, I, if my neighbors don't raise up and we make these calls into the department, it doesn't get done. Is there any way to set up some type of rotation? Maybe, like I said, we can't get into it tonight, to where since we know the condition of this home or this house and property and that no one's around to do it, that um, it, it's on an automatic schedule. Now, I don't know if that's a manpower problem or a manning problem or what, but they exist. They're out there. These situations are out there that we know there's not nobody that's going to cut that grass or, you know, do that. So I'll stop right there with those two. But if we can just find a way to work with me on those two things, I appreciate you. Okay. Thanks. Yep, we'll do that. I think we can set up recurring work orders, too. I know that they already have them on 30-day cycles, but I'll okay. double check and make sure that we can, you know, will you see Okay, it might be something can. I don't know, Dan. Yeah, but we'll I appreciate We'll look it. into it definitely. And okay. We'll work Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the one thing that I that stands out to me, and this is the street sweepers. And I'm glad to see that you're expanding that because we've got a lot of streets that uh, need cleaned. And uh, it's hard to do it on a regular basis with just two pieces of equipment because I have to go back and forth to the, <coughs> the garage and so forth. And uh, you might, might look into leasing all four of them. And I know you said you were going to evaluate that. And uh, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't call on you to look at uh, Irisdale, Northgate, and Peoria Road. And uh, I know you do that, so we'll let it go with that. Alderwoman Purchase. Thank you, Chair. Um, first, I would just like to say thank you to you, Director Bottom, and Director Harris, because since I've been here, this has been my most interacting interaction with you all almost every other day since September 5th, and that's a lot. And you all are very proactive about getting out and doing this, so that leads me into the report a problem system. Um, some of my neighborhoods, they report problems that do not come directly to me, but has went to a system that you all have in place to take care of. Do you know when this new system will be completed and will you be doing like a, a, tour, a tutorial of how to work it and use it? Um, yeah, I'll work with the uh, communications director. I, hope, I think it's going to be fair, fairly straightforward, uh, but if there are issues, we can definitely create a tutorial on there. And well, we look at, we're looking at doing it within a, a month or so, a month or two. Okay. Is the goal. And then my second um, question, follow-up question is, I remember when I first got here, you had a map on the screen and you showed how many um, problems was reported to those different areas. Well, that, I know that it's going to be included in here, but where do we get that now? Is the public able to see that or that was just something that you showcased at the time in like September or October when we last saw it? Yeah, that was something that we just showcased at that time. Um, we can work with uh, co coordinator council if they want to test it out, and then you guys can take a look at it. And, and, and please know it's not going to cover, it's only going to cover the ones that you specifically submitted that need, that required a service request okay. um, or, or a work order. So it's not necessarily going to cover the PLL cases because those go in anonymous anyway. So it, it, it doesn't, it's only a small snapshot of everything that, that you submit to us. So it's, it's not necessarily fair. And, it, and then also we get so many different service requests just throughout the community. I mean, you, you guys are only a, yes, a small portion of it. Mm -hmm. So thank you on yeah, that. And that. then um, I just wanted to say kudos to, to the 10 day window on reviews for people who are submitting their plans. Um, and just in my ward alone, I have a lot of businesses that are doing projects and we get a lot of concerns and some complaints about them not being reviewed in enough time. So sitting here and stating this today brings me some comfort too for the future projects that's coming forward. And thank you all again for the work that you do. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And, and I, I apologize. I, I just kind of jumped into it, but uh, I do have Deputy Director Harris here with me, <laughs> as well as Matt Garani, <laughs> our Supervisor of Fiscal Services, and LaShonda Fitch, our Executive Director of Oak Ridge Cemetery is here too. So, 
I just, I, I apologize. And eligible for retirement before we move on, we have 45% eligible in five years and 30% eligible in one year. So I try to track that and we try, but a lot of that is out at the garage, um, operating engineers and uh, TDLs form and lead form and, but uh, we have some secession planning going there. You did so. a, a amazing job tonight. You had a lot. I thought you was going to breathe a few times and you did. Thanks. Uh, I'm trying to get you guys out of here. <laughs> Bill McCarty, take note. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good job. Alderwoman DeCenso. Thank you. Um, thank you all, of course. I, you, you know how much I communicate with you. Um, can we do some sort of informational or educational something about cleaning inlets? Because people think they have sewer problems that they don't have. Um, especially in older neighborhoods, there's leaves jammed in there, there's gumballs jammed in there, and it's really not a sewer problem. Yeah. It is an upkeep problem, and people don't realize, and I know we, you know, I put it out there all the time, keep your inlets clear, but people don't realize that they have to, that they have to do that themselves, and it's a real issue. So, you know, I've seen street sweepers go by, and sometimes it'll just push it further down in there, and then when the, we get a big rain, then the streets flood, and... It's preventable, is my point. Um, second, I didn't see how many, I saw how many demos were slated for last year, or how many demos were accomplished last year, but I didn't see how many demolitions were on the calendar for this year. 70. 70, okay, so I missed that. And then my last thing is only 100, and I say only, $121,000 in housing fines. I mean, that seems really low for as much as we turn in. And I did that just what we turn in. So I don't know if we need to, you know, to increase those fines or, or what, but that, that does not seem like a, lar a very large number to me based on the amount of work we put into these housing complaints. So, Deputy Director Harris informed me that a majority of the people actually comply within the seven days. So that's 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 a portion of why it's it's only so high, and also some people just don't pay as well as the treasurer could inform me. Right. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Yeah. Alderman McMinnman. Director Bottom, uh, outstanding job. You uh, you covered a lot of territory. You've got a very complex set of responsibilities. You've got multitudes of projects, um, different kinds of activities within public works, and uh, you somehow are able to manage it all, and you're wearing two hats. You know, you're both our chief city engineer and you're also director. Historically, those were two different positions, and I think there's still two different positions, but you've, you've taken both which saves us some money, but it, it, it puts a lot more on your shoulders. And that's kind of similar with Doug Brown. He's still wearing two hats. He's the chief utility engineer, and um, he's also the overall director of utilities. That's a change that Mayor Houston made when he came in to put, he decided to assign both positions to one person, and it saves us, I don't know, $200,000 a year. Uh, but uh, congratulations with your department and everyone working within your department. And I've got one request, and it's really to Mr. Mayor, which is, because I think it's got to come from you, um, and I think this impacts the whole city, I think we've got to beautify our gateways into the city, whether it be Peoria Road, um, Clear Lake, um, Sixth Street, Sixth Street Walnut Jefferson, um, South Grand, and even uh, the, the entryway from uh, the airport, mm -hmm. you know, we had to take down all those ash trees, and uh, that's the entryway for people coming in on the airport, Walnut Street, J. David Jones Parkway. We're the capital of Illinois. I wasn't born and raised here, but uh, came here to live in 1979, and uh, 79, yeah, that was 79. And uh, I've always thought that we, we got to beautify our city, make it a wow factor when people come into the city. And so I direct it to you, Mr. Mayor, because I think we probably need some high level um, urban planners uh, by contract to give us a, a list of ideas of how we can be such a proud city for our international visitors, 
our national visitors and our statewide visitors that come to Springfield for Lincoln oftentimes, but we're going to have other reasons for them to come to Springfield too. Um, and so uh, I hope we, you can put that on top of your, on your plate too, Director Bottom. <clears throat> Thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. And it's, um, you know, I believe in empowering my employees and have, I've, we have an amazing staff. We truly do. So it's, it's, it's across the board. Uh, we work as a team really well together and I'm, I'm very blessed to have such an amazing staff. So they're, they're, they're the ones that do that and I delegate and, and, and they do an amazing job. So I'm very, very blessed. Uh, in regards to the corridors, we'll definitely work, a lot of those are IDOT corridors, we'll work closely with them. We have done a few beautification projects along Clear Lake a few years ago. When I didn't mention, but we are, uh, should be selecting a consultant for the North Grand and South Grand Avenue beautification projects too, uh, here, here shortly so that we can start that design. But uh, we'll, we'll reach out to IDOT and see what we can do for, for planning purposes to beautify and the mayor wants to add anything. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Alderwoman Connolly. Wonderful. Well, listen, I just, it's kind of nice being at this end of the, the circle. People have raised a lot of the questions I would have raised, so I appreciate that. Um, so I'll keep mine brief. Obviously, thank you. You guys are great. Um, really impressed with the services you provide. A um, couple of things. If you could just clarify, just so people can understand, when you talked about the two-day window for yard waste pickup, can you just kind of explain what that will mean to, to, can, to people in the city? Sure. So um, what we're planning on doing is um, the Republic Services is still planning on starting from west to east, and there will be a two-day window that uh, will have a projected start date, and they will have it picked up within the two days of that projected start date. So say if you're on the, on the far west side, your, your pickup is going to be Monday, and it's still going to be a biweekly pickup, but it, it, yours, will be, your, yours will be picked up either Monday or Tuesday if your projected start date is that. However, as, the, as we, they move across the, uh, the city, in the middle of the city, the projected start date is going to be Wednesday, so they will get it picked up Wednesday and Thursday, and that will be on our, on our map on springfield.il.us, and we'll work with them to get the word out to know which uh, work zone you're in. Right. Does that, does that make sense? That, it does. Thank you. Because I know, um, and I appreciate this, because one of the complaints we get is, you know, I put my yard waste out on Monday, and then it's, or, or Sunday, um, and then it sits until Friday, maybe, you know, and, and so people get concerned. It's sitting out there for a while. Obviously, if it rains during the week, you can plan a little bit. So I, I appreciate you taking this initiative. I think it's going to, especially as we educate people as to what this means, you know, um, so that we don't have even even more reduction in how much time those bags are sitting on, on street curbs. So that's great. Um, I'm glad it's going to be part of the mapping, too. Um, I, I point to that map a lot and just say, look, at this is when it's coming. This is these are engineers. They're going to be methodical about what this, how this works. So this will this will be orderly. Um, Talking about the mapping concepts, um, again, very excited about the new street sweepers. We've talked about having a schedule that's posted. Could we, and I know you're working towards that. Um, I'd also like to see that where those street sweepers are is reflected online, and I just haven't looked to see if it is. Um, but that way we can point to, you know, this is the last time your street was touched, and I can show you because this is, it's been tracked here. And this is when you can kind of expect to see them back, and this is where they are right now. Um, partially, it'd just be nice to let people know when to have their cars off the street so we really have a more effective use of, of your time or your, your, your staff time and, and get the roads looking nicer. So that'll be a big improvement. Um, I agree. And, and there is going to be a lead time, too, just to let you know before we get them. And we will want to try to work out the kinks until we totally set that schedule. But uh, we're, we're, that is definitely the plan. And then I, and rolling it out kind of like how Chicago has their street sweepers on their map was, was the plan ultimately, too. Hey, I, I got a ticket visiting my daughter because I left my car on a road that was being swept that morning. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I paid it. <laughs> um, no, but that... It will make a difference, and if we can even move to a point where we can have people expect, you know, the first week of this month, you know, try to not park on the street as much as you can. It will make a big difference to how effective everything is. Um, everyone else has touched on my other questions, so also congratulations on that no breathing presentation. You actually <laughs> left me up behind on a page, so well done. Thanks. Alderman Donlin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, I have heard from my colleagues tonight, a lot of the things that are of utmost importance, not only to their wards, but to the city as a whole, 
Um, to repeat those things would be overkill, and I do not want to keep everybody here all night. But I will say, I want to say a couple things, and, and, and most importantly, thank you to the staff that are out on the streets every, every day and night. It is night a lot of times. Uh, the countless contacts that I've made with the department and the responses that we get, uh, you should be proud of not only the things that your staff does, but you should be proud, you and Director Harris, of, the, of the, your commitment to getting those problems resolved in the neighborhoods because that's what they are. They're neighborhood problems. It may not be important, may not seem important to some people, but a pothole can be a big deal uh, to somebody who lives in the neighborhoods. And uh, I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, there's, Mayor, there's countless times when these two individuals, uh, we have an issue out in the neighborhoods and they, they meet me after hours and, <clears throat> and uh, uh, meet the residents, uh, sometimes one-on-one. -on -one and uh, to just talk about the problems and try to find a, a solution that works. And uh, thank you for allowing them to do that and thank you for your involvement as well. And uh, I, I did wanna say that, uh, and then I'm gonna wrap it up. I did wanna say uh, also that uh, we, have a, we have a phantom scooper in Ward 9, uh, a gentleman I found out through walking one morning who goes around in his van with a big shovel and I, Alder Woman DeCenzo, this is an issue you brought up, and he scoops the, the debris inlets. that's in, uh, covering the drainage grates. And one morning, I, and, I, and I happened to know the guy and where he lives, and a subdivision <laughs> over it, and I said, you're the, fa you're the phantom, you're the phantom scooper. So we you have send one of him those to Ward and, 6? But that's, no, he's, he's in Ward 9, and he he's, he's, <laughs> he's does a great job. So I want to thank him as well. Uh, and, then, and then finally, uh, I'm just very pleased, Mayor, and uh, we brought this up before that uh, the Koki Mill project is moving forward on uh, Washington and Old Jack, uh, the Chatham Road overlay, uh, the oil and chip to asphalt conversions. Those things are all extremely important. And then I'm, that's all I got to say tonight. But thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Nate, I, a couple of questions I have. How many, how many vacant lots does the city mow uh, roughly? I, you, and you can get back to me. And, and then I guess the other question is how many of those, how many city lots? Uh, how many vacant lots does the city actually own? Because we anticipate we mow about 275, but a lot of them are the same county trust. He has, has those lots though. And how many, how many lots does the city own? Do we know that, that number off? <coughs> if you don't, I can get it later. Well, we'll give you that number. All right. Because, uh, you know, we got to figure out what it costs us from a city standpoint of, uh, on, to own these vacant lots. And we need to get them. I think that, it, you know, we need, a, we need a cost associated with them. And we got to get those out on the market because, um, first of all, we're not getting any property tax whatsoever on them. And we're having to pay to cut them. So w I think that that's, that's important. Um, the plans and permits online. I think that with, based on what the treasurer uh, told us the other day about the one point something percent of people that actually come in to, to, to do things, I, I know I don't know what the one stop shop cost. Do you have that cost? What 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 is going to cost us to to do a one stop shop? Yeah, I think that was estimated around five hundred thousand dollars originally. Because I I think that. I don't know what we have to do to get everything, get everything online. If we have to hire, I think that's, I think once we get more things online, you're going to see less people come down here. So that would, that would eliminate really the need for a one-stop shop, so to speak, because, you know, it, it, we're going to, we're going to have fewer people come down. I'd like to see us use that money to, to make sure we implement this online uh, system. I think that's important. Um, regarding the parking meters and the parking downtown, um, have we done a return on investment? Uh, look at, at what those meters, how, how soon we get, get buyback on those meters. And based on what we've done the last two years, um, why don't we just pull the meters out and, and go with the time parking downtown? I think that that's worth a look. I, 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 I mean, I'm not, I don't want to get into uh, Alderwoman Purchase's territory, but it just seems, you know, if, if, 
it, it may be more beneficial than to spend a million dollars on smart meters when when we can just do uh, um, you know the time downtown like we've been doing the last last couple of years. The, you know, lastly, the other thing on the meters, uh, the last thing on the meters is that I think that we need to look at doing um, doing the single meter or the single kiosk and have people go to the kiosk. I think I've, I've gone to Chicago, uh, St. Louis, they all do it. It'll definitely save money. We don't have to have a um, meter meter guy go around to each meter. They're, they're right there. I think we need to really seriously look at that. But that's things we can we can talk about on there. Thank you, Ralph, because I've, I've talked about that in my meeting. But thanks for bringing it up tonight. Good minds think alike. Okay. Um, a couple things I've going through. Um, the under the streets, um, they've got you've got seven hundred thousand for sidewalk, driveway repairs, slab jackers, and downtown planners. The year before, we've only spent fifteen hundred dollars. That's a seven hundred. That's a seven hundred thousand dollar, seven hundred one thousand, or well, seven hundred thousand dollar difference. That's on page. Hell, hell, I don't. Seven. <laughs> it looks like it's on page 10 of, or 11 of your of your budget line and I just wondered what what that why that cost was so so much greater it's it's more of like a larger capital project to help beautify the um, beautify the downtown area I believe it's second to ninth Jefferson to Capitol Avenue that's adding 144 trees I think 1.75 inches in caliper some pretty nice trees that can um, be supported in downtown as well as like 140 plus planters mm -hmm. and 140 plus um, ornamental grass, Carl Forrester grass to help beautify, beautify the area. So it's a larger capital project cost. Okay, and then on um, uh, this, I think I know the answer to this, but I wanted to ask uh, yeah. under the um, cemetery, <laughs> you have a, there's a, uh, there's a insurance line that we never paid a thing and it's 3,500. Is it, to cover insurance on the new van that they want, I assume. That's on page. I'll let, uh, I'll let Julie answer that question. What? Julie's going to answer that. Oh. Should have, OBM should have gone over this kind of at the beginning thing. And you're going to see this repeatedly in both 1225 and 1804. The self insurance was uh, and still is quite healthy in property and casualty, and in um, and that's in 1804 for car insurance and 1225 for like your slip and fall. So we waived the last two years, which is what reflected in your budget book. We didn't pay ourselves that premium. Right. And so now we've started paying again. You'll see those little changes in everybody's 1225 and 1804. So we just restored it from two years ago. If you could see five years back, you'd see the pattern hasn't changed and now we just reinstituted it. Okay. I, I, I just noticed that and I thought that was kind of kind of crazy. Um, and then I think that's yours. The, they're all all the lines are starting to look look alike anymore. <laughs> they're, they're I'm so brain dead on this. Um, I think that's that's it. Um, Mayor, do you have anything or a couple items? One is uh, with regards to the one-stop shop. It's uh, moving services to the first floor. And it's uh, for convenience, but also security, so you don't have people roaming the halls, and uh, it makes it a lot better effectively uh, to do that. So that's why the main purpose was security, but centralizing everybody that has customer service offices, moving them down to the first floor. Uh, with regards to downtown, it's all about uh, moving traffic. So we'd want downtown Springfield to weigh in on this because they've looked at the meters, they looked at the... Uh, uh, the kiosk. The other thing is uh, we are experiencing right now where you have, um, you know, employer, em, employees downtown. They park and they know how the system works. You just move it across the street, move it a couple of blocks, and it's just musical cars. And so uh, we have masters of that. And uh, <laughs> uh, we have a lot of uh, parking lot owners complaining of the free parking. And uh, because they're, uh, you know, they're not seeing their canceled uh, parking, uh, <coughs> monthly parkers are parking on the streets, and that's what's happening. So even though you'd say, oh, it's two hours, 
I can park two hours in Monroe, and all I have to do at break time in the morning, pull over on Capitol or wherever, and then uh, two hours later at lunch, I move uh, over another block, and you just play musical chairs. But it's all about convenience. I mean, that's what it's about. So we'd want downtown Springfield to weigh in, which uh, was the direction originally how we got to this point. Thank you. Um, is there any other uh, questions for the uh, director? Sorry, Ralph. Yeah. Aaron? I, I'm sorry. I just forgot one thing. I got so excited everyone asked all my other questions. Um, director, I would just ask that with our tree plantings and um, as we move forward that we're planting native species and um, not just, you know, as a, as a preference, but that we really are including Illinois native species and not some of these other ones that come no in. No gumballs. <laughs> we, you, Lord, no geez. one's planting gumballs. We, we don't plant those anymore. And uh, uh, we, no we do trees? definitely have natives mm -hmm. in no the mix. Trees. Hold them a red path. Trees. Nate, sorry to come back to this, but did, um, the under the bridge thing, I called you today about the $85 million or something. Um, did we add Hazeldale Road, the, the railroad bridge there? I think I talked to you in our, in our meetings, but did you add that to our our list to look at uh, replacing that bridge. Uh, so that's going to be coordinated with the CNINM, but that is not included in the in that list. Um, okay. the, the basically, it's the. I'm, not, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Chairman. I know you didn't want to talk about a specific no project, specific but that's questions. a pretty big one. And yet he did. <laughs> All right, any, well, I can Alderman do it. Williams. Yeah, real quick. So, uh, <laughs> does the cemetery fall under this department? Yeah. It yep. does, and Lashonda is here as well. If okay, you'd like well, to ask her well, a question. So. So Alderman Purchase told me that, well, all the woman Purchase right. told me that um, that they have a like a raggedy car or or whatever. So uh, are they, are you going to upgrade their car or? Yes, we have it in the budget to get a, a okay. van. Okay. Budget. Okay. Nate, again, I, I talked about these things in my meeting. I was trying to follow the rules. They, I knew she was getting a nice vehicle that was going to be helpful for handicap accessibility. I'm, I'm fighting for my people. I, I didn't know she had a car, but, you know. Anything, anyone else? All right, with that, I'm uh, I'll motion to adjourn. Uh, all right, we'll see you Monday night where we have police and fire. That should be a fun one. Uh, folks, just to... Uh, Council members, just to give you a heads up, tonight before I leave, I'll be hitting the send button on the fire study, which will be coming to your inboxes. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>